Let's see how I will manage. Thank you very much. Everything is about co-creation. Thank you very much for being here. It's a very well put. Everything is a co-creation. Now we set it up. Can we set it down? Okay. Let's turn it off. So let me know, can we take our edges? At one point we'll go back to it. Well, my name is Hami. My mother calls me Sinan and uh, my teacher called me Kami, so I'm somewhere in between, Kami Sinan. Uh, but I prefer to be called uh, Kami. Let's turn this off so that the day will. Oh, it, you will do it from somewhere else. I guess. Okay. I'm very glad to be back in Macedonia. I was here about 20 years ago as a photojournalist, photographing the beauty of Macedonia, the culture, the ethnicity, the the salad. <laughs> Everybody knows the Macedonian salad? Oh, yeah. This is the last country in the world I can ask what Macedonian salad is. Uh, but I was photographing ethnic culture. Today, uh, I'm back in Macedonia um, with you guys to talk about stress management. Stress management according to the yogic tradition, according to yoga therapy. So, Let's start with talking about a little bit of a yoga. Um, who is a yoga practitioner here? His hands, great, great. So you are here not for the stress, but you are here for just to hear another version of yoga. Exactly, because they don't have much stress. Yoga, um, yoga is an integrated, is an integrated system of human. Um, behavior is an integrated system of human science uh, that puts different layers of the being all together to see how we can manage to see within, how we can manage to see who we really are. And once, the yoga tradition says, once you find who you are, then you understand how the universe functions. So above as below is the main doctrine of many religions. So as of yogas. But what yoga is, uh, take the religion out of the spirituality and stay within the spiritual realm, that is yoga. So yoga gives us a very spiritual background, a very spiritual path, a very spiritual way of looking at things, except the religion. So what I call it, it is the mathematics, mathematics of spirituality. Yoga comes from uh, India. It's an ancient wisdom, it's an ancient practice that dates back to the vocal times, that dates back to beyond the, the written times. We see uh, the, on the statues, we see on the, on the damga, the, the stamps. But then when the, but then when the written uh, times, written uh, age starts, we see yoga in the Upanishads in the ancient text, in ancient Vedic texts, texts of India. So traditionally, yoga teaches us to go within and find who you really are, and in this way, you find the essence of yourself. That is a pure light. This pure light brings you the enlightenment. So yoga is the path for enlightenment. But when yoga moved into the West uh, with the hippie generation, 1968 generation, um, they went everywhere in the world and one of the places they went was India. And when they came back to New York, they came back with the beautiful practice of yoga. 
and uh, the Western society integrated yoga into uh, the mainstream. What we start seeing in the West is more the uh, health approach to yoga rather than the uh, spiritual aspects. Because the Western uh, mind uh, is not quite looking forward to get enlightened, rather uh, live healthy and happy. So uh, the, the spiritual aspects of yoga are taken out and what we have is a sort of a gymnastics that support our well-being in our physics. So that's how yoga developed uh, within, uh, within the last 50 years in the West. But for about 40 years, people realized that when you do yoga, you don't get sick. When you do yoga, you have a healthy life, you have a happy life. So your life is a bit of integrated, your physical body, and then your emotional body, uh, your mental body, your spiritual body, your different layers of your being is well integrated and you feel the wholeness, you feel oneness. So yoga gives us a whole, a, a holistic, the whole the picture, holistic approach of um, our technology, our biology, our human science. So today I will be talking uh, about stress management through the practice of yoga. To be able to uh, talk about stress, where uh, you, oh, everybody's from, um, which departments are you guys from? Psychology. Everyone's from psychology. Architecture. Architecture also? Okay. So some of you will know what I'm talking about already. So you will start integrating in your mind how you can um, bring awareness um, through, through the science of yoga. And some of you will hear the very first time what I'll be talking about. But what I'll be talking about is a lot um, um, supported by neuroscience. What yoga teaches us uh, is uh, supported very much with the Western, um, Western science. And um, we are realizing that matter and spirit are quite the one. The matter and spirit are not separated entities. So this is a bit I'm going to be talking to you about um, how the material moves into spirit. Okay, so a little bit of a background information. have the third one. Excellent. Uh, as a bit of a background information, I would like to I would like to talk to you about um, how your daily performance relates to your um, physiology. So do we have a board here? No. So just imagine I'm going to describe you a building, a building with a roof and a building with a foundation. So this building will have different layers. This building will have a support over top of each other. Different layers will come up to the roof that will come up to the highest point of our structure. Let's call this structure uh, performance. Today you are studying architecture, you are studying different uh, subjects, uh, but it will change in time. Maybe you will not stay in the same um, field. Maybe you will be studying something different. Maybe you will be, after studying, you will be living a different lifestyle. Everything will change in your life, but one thing will be certain. You will be carrying this goal in your life. You will be carrying this uh, target, the performance. Whatever we do, um, what we do affects our performance. This is an amazing team you have. Let's bring it this way, maybe. There is a more area.
failed. <laughs> So our performance is the key, is the target. This is what we're shooting for. And um, the way the performance changes depends on the behavior. Right? So whatever you do, uh, when you do something, uh, your behavior of doing this changes your performance. For example, uh, You have a report, you do something, and you go to your manager, you go to your teacher, you go to your mentor, and you give the results, <coughs> and the teacher says, well, why don't you do this more, do this less, and skip that. You go back, and when you come back, you end up having a different performance. But there is something beyond the performance. There's something else that makes your performance change. That is your thinking. How you think changes your performance. If you, if you think I'm stupid, if you think I'm an idiot, if you don't believe what I say, you will not listen to what I what I tell you. If your mentor or if your manager tells you that, um, let's say he will tell you, go and uh, make 20 phone calls. If you believe uh, the 20 phone calls is necessary for the job, you will go and do it. If you think what he's, what he's saying is right, you will uh, change your behavior and make these 20 phone calls. But if you believe that this is not the right way, let's say you think that you should make only three phone calls and spend more time with these three people, it's going to affect your performance better, then you will go back and you will have to do the 20 phone calls, but you will not be really happy with yourself. Because you're thinking differently than what you're supposed to do. Then your performance will be different. So thinking is a major, um, it affects um, what you're doing outside. So what you're doing and your performance is, your, is what we see outside. But we need to look beyond what we see outside. This is within. What you're thinking is not enough. There's also other reasons beyond, beyond, behind the uh, the thinking process. That is how you're feeling. Even if you believe that you need to make 20 phone calls, but it's Friday afternoon, you will not be very happy with it. You will go back and feeling you don't really want to do it. So you will never be uh, really changing your thinking pattern because your feelings are different. Your feeling. And when I talk about thinking and feeling, um, you know, in the old times they used to put the microphone on the TV and ask, what are your think thinking and feelings about? What are your thoughts and feelings about it? And people would usually talk about their thinking. When you ask a man uh, how they feel uh, or how they think, men usually talk about how they think and they quite don't know the difference between thinking and feeling. And the girls are smiling. Uh, and the guys are still, what, 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 <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, this is quite uh, uh, the challenge in our society, in our masculine society. Uh, we are not really getting into an open monitoring way of looking at life. We are not looking to see within, we are not looking to feel the essence of things. 
we are thinking right or wrong and in some cases closed and this is the right thing and never want to change. It is very important that you go back to your feelings and feel, see how it changes your thinking process. And that is not even enough. We have one more layer going down. These are the emotions. Wait a minute. Are they the same? Emotions and feelings are totally different. Well, this is your uh, this is your subject. Probably you know the difference between emotions and uh, feelings. But I will only talk to the architects here. Emotions and feelings are totally different. Emotions are streams of data coming through your system into your brain. These are some emo information coming from your uh, your your physiology. Your, your biology. So everything really relates down to our base, which is the physiology. So if I go down up, we have our system operating and it's constantly generating information. For example, if the person's stomach is twisted, his hands are sweaty, all these are emotions, all these are <coughs> sensory information coming into the brain. And his mouth is dry. Hmm? And maybe his voice is shaky. All these are emotions, all these are streams of data, data coming to the brain. They can come in the electrical form, they can come in electromagnetic form, like the twist gives a kind of a pressure, pressures, or chemistry, a change in hormones. All these streams of data are electricity forms in motion. So they are emotion. These are the emotions, the streams of data coming into the brain. And from the emotions, the brain decides all this combination gives me anxiety. Right? Anxiety is the feeling. And when you're anxious, anxious, your decision making will be different than when you're happy. Exactly the same situation, but when you are in one feeling, your thinking will be different, and if you are in another feeling, your thinking will be different. So this is a little bit of a background of what I'll be talking about. When you make a decision, when you are thinking of, on something, you need to be aware of your feelings and emotions and of your physiology. And this is where yoga comes into picture, because yoga really gives us the uh, the technology, the, 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 the way we can see deeper aspects of the self. Oh, I lost the picture. <coughs> so we said uh, we have many streams of data coming uh, to, the, to the system. And some of these, uh, this combination I gave you uh, about anxiety, this combination of electrical waves or electromagnetic waves in chemistry, if you can play with one of them, if you can change one of them, you can start changing the feelings. Maybe uh, that little electrical change in the body will stop you being anxious. And which is uh, true, this is exactly how it works in the body. You change consciously a system in the body, an energy flow in the body, then you uh, change your emotions and your thinking. When we talk about... Let's take one... Let's take... Oh, I, I'm losing people. No, some of them might have... Exactly. And also the classes.
Oh, because the schedule is tight. Yeah, okay. So we will take uh, one of the streams, one of the electrical streams, uh, and uh, we will talk about it. That is our heart rate. So everybody has seen in the movies and uh, there is this there is this chart uh, next to the patient and it goes the, the, and it always finishes the <laughs> this is uh, this shows that uh, the person is alive or dead this this shows that the person heart is beating each time uh, the heart pumps, there's an electrical signal moving and we catch these signals and see that the heart is beating. And uh, when we look at this signal, we take an average and we call it, let's say, 70. We know this person is alive and we know that this person uh, beats the heart um, beat per minute, BPM, uh, 70 uh, times. But what the 70 really is the average. It shows that uh, the heart is beating a lot or not, that is good information, but you are skipping a lot of information in, the, in, in between because each beat is not exactly in the same space, in the same time. It varies. And what we call this heart rate variability. The heart beat change. And it is very essential. It is important to know this. Uh, otherwise, uh, if you listen Mozart and you say, da, that is the 70, da, that is the average of Mozart. But is it really Mozart or is it something else? Um, with this information, heart rate variability, uh, there are several things we can learn. For example, if we know the heart rate variability of a person for the next 24 hours, we can say if this person is going to die. Did I get your attention? It's not very important for the corporates though. Um, they are not interested in, 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 in the uh, life cycle of the person, they are more interested in how we can use this information to alter our, our mind, to change our thinking patterns. Uh, so I would like to um, get a volunteer from you, anyone, and I will hook up a, a gadget in the ear and see how the heart rate variability changes under stress. So we need uh, the team to start. So this is uh, this is the connection. This is the connection between uh, the the heart. This is the connection between the heart and the brain. So you should say this is or this is the limbic system, right? This is our brain. And then there is the heart. There is a direct connection between our heart and our brain. And when the HRV, the heart rate variability, becomes chaotic by Tamar, uh, a minute ago, when it's chaotic, the information comes to the brain, makes the brain shut down in the cortex. This is what we call the uh, cortical inhibition, or in other words, lobotomy, right? Uh, we simply stupidify ourselves under stress. Like we've got a stupid pill and we're a, a, a very simple task we are not able to perform. 
this is exactly what's happening. And um, why is this happening? Because we are designed that way. And we are designed that way 200,000 years ago. And we didn't get a new version of our um, biology. It's just the way it is. Um, imagine you're a caveman, cave woman. Uh, you walk in the prairie and uh, all of a sudden there's a tiger in front of you. You don't think, you don't want to think, you don't think if this tiger is a Bengalese tiger or how nice the color is, the points are so beautiful, or is this an African tiger? No, the tiger will eat you. So we are not designed to think in a situation when we are under stress. When we're under stress, we shut down everything. Everything is either black or white. It's binary. It's either fight or play. You went through this? Yes, 101. OK. So um, imagine the tigers here coming from the room right here, just looking at you. What would you do? Right here. There is another <laughs> Some of you would want to flight, right? And some of you, okay, maybe not with a tiger, but maybe with a big dog. Maybe you can think also about fighting to the dog. Fight or flight mode is the typical reaction when you are under stress. Because several things happen. Um, I will just repeat all this. You know all this uh, already. But I will repeat in case. Uh, when there is the stress, the information it comes directly to your amygdala. Everybody knows amygdala? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Comes directly to your amygdala. Amygdala is the 911. It is the call center. Uh, like, this is what's happening. And automatically, amygdala makes the decision itself. But oh, there's a serious situation here. And automatically, cortisol is the stress hormone is released in the body. At the same time, um, the eye pupils get bigger. Why? Because you want to see the situation clearly. You want to see if, you, if the tiger has strong jaws. You want to see what's happening. You want to be able to assess the situation. Your blood pressure rises. Uh, your heart beat because you want extra oxygen in your system if you want to run away. Uh, your cells start releasing sugar because your body needs a lot of energy to be able to uh, fight if they need to or run if they need to. So all this process is um, the the early stages of the um, of the stress. There are three stages of stress. Everybody knows the three stages of the stress. Okay, that's an exam question, guys. <laughs> Compulsive holding. Compulsive. What is? Compulsive holding. Okay. There's a there's a quote. There's a subject like that. Yes. There's a question for that example. The the three question. stages of stress. Um, there is there is a there is a terminology in uh, medicine. It's called uh, homeostasis. <coughs> homeostasis is the situation, is, 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 is the um, state of the body when everything is stable. S homeostasis, stable. Everything is stable right now in your body, in your system. But in this moment, you breath. You, some more oxygen came into the body. The oxygen carbon dioxide uh, levels changed, the pH changed. Uh, right now, uh, a little bit of a sugar is released from the morning coffee. And all this changed, and then because of all these changes, your system adapts to it momentarily. The system makes all the adjustments, and you come back to a perfect state again. And this is called homeostasis. Homeostasis is a perfect balance point where everything is within the move. Everything is moving at the same time. Everything is at the same time in stable, stability. 
So when we are in this perfect stable condition, in homeostasis condition, something happens, externally or internally, something happens that creates stress. We call this, again, it's a technical term, stressor. As a tiger can be a stressor, uh, your next uh, exam can be a stressor, um, your landlord asking for the next month's rent can be a stressor, uh, or the extra salt in your food can be a stressor. Any stressor coming into your system will change everything and everything will adapt accordingly to that. But first, we have different um, uh, layers. We have three different stages that we cope with the stress. The first uh, one is alarm. This is when the information comes to amygdala and amygdala makes the decision. That is the alarm. And then, and then the body starts uh, uh, creating a game plan. Uh, the information from amygdala goes to hypothalamus. Hypothalamus makes the decision to um, makes different decisions what to do next and then gives all this information to pituitary gland and pituitary gland uh, starts ordering uh, like coordinating uh, an orchestra giving all the information to the body and the body starts releasing hormones and you start creating um, different layers of cortisol and body needs to, body does what needs to be done okay that's the, that is the resistance until here we don't have we don't have much control because we are in, under a, a situation where we need to cope with it. But then there is another layer. There is another stage in the uh, in the stress, and we call it exhaustion. By the way, stress is not bad. Stress is considered bad, but sometimes uh, people die because they don't have stress, enough stress. People forget to breathe when they're sleeping because they just don't have stress. They don't need to uh, be uptight about things and they just forget to breathe and they die. So uh, sometimes you need stress. Stress is not bad, but you need to be able to cope with it. You need to be able to learn how to manage this. Sometimes be able to consciously rise your cons uh, stress and sometimes, most of the time, be able to lower your stress. And lowering the stress, when it comes to the point of lowering the stress, this is usually the time when exha exhaustion comes. Because until alarm and resistance, until this point, everything is uh, acute. It's a momentary situation and you have to react to it and this is how the body functions you react to it but then it is your decision to either turn it into chronical or just let it go for example if the tiger decides not to eat us and decides to just go back and behind the, the tiger two of the guys jump and close the door what else would we do when the tiger left, what would we do? What would you do? The tiger is just gone. Shake off. Go and check out the door. <laughs> I wish we could all shake off. Continue your day. Continue your day, really. <laughs> that is okay, whatever happens, 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 I will double check. Whatever happens, happens. <laughs> Go to the door and check if he has left. Somebody would call uh, someone, uh, somebody would look to see, uh, somebody would put the microphone in their hand and make all the plans to see if the tiger comes back and when the tiger, and uh, the university manager would, would, would take all the actions to, to, to make sure that there's no tigers in the campus anymore. Somebody would lie that the tiger ran away from me. <laughs> 
you have to cope with uh, what to do next with the tiger. And maybe someone will take statistics of uh, how many tigers were in the campus last year. So all these uh, processes are human nature. We are dealing with our minds, we are working with our minds, and we, we tend to use our minds more than uh, maybe how they, we should. But um, she said it, right? What would a, a deer would do if a deer would be in front of the tiger and the tiger is gone? What would the deer do? Did you ever throw a dog into a swimming pool? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Animals come out of the stress and they <coughs> shake it off. They simply shake it off. It is very simple. Um, um, at the moment of the stress, all these emotions running in the system create a certain moment, a certain um, combination of electricity, pressure, chemistry, all of this is a form of a molecule. It turns into a form of a molecule. A molecule built in this pressure, in this temperature, in this wave, in this heartbeat, in this amount of breath, everything at this moment creates Everything at this moment creates a molecule and with these molecules we tend to build them and store them and live with them. But the animals don't do that. They just shake it off and go. So long story short, shake and uh, <laughs> the lecture is over. Um, I have a good note here I would like to share with you. Mark Twain, I love Mark Twain's sayings. Uh, he said, I am an old man and have known a great many troubles, but most of them never happened. So we keep thinking and thinking and thinking and overthinking, uh, and uh, so it's really not helping us. When we go through the exhaust, exhaustion state, uh, so in other words, <clears throat> when our cortisol level is still very high, it is not good for our bone structure because the bones are deteriorated deteriorate, uh, because of the cortisol level. Uh, the sugar level is very high, and uh, in the body, uh, when the sugar level is very high, the body becomes acidic. The oxygen level is very high because your breathing increases uh, uh, because of the stress. And the oxygen level and the sugar level in the body is very high. It turns the whole body into a very acidic system. And the bones are perfect alkali depot because uh, they have the calcium. Uh, so what happens is body starts under stress, body starts pulling uh, a lot of uh, alkali from the bones, a lot of um, a structure of the bone is collapsed under the stress. So you're losing a lot of power, uh, physical power as well. Um, the bones are uh, the essence, the, 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 the production point uh, for the immune system. Uh, it's, they're producing many cells, many soldiers of the body. So you lose a lot of functions of your immune system as well. Uh, you into uh, uh, the death of neurons because of the stress and uh, all this eventually kills you. <coughs> so we need to do something about our stress. We need to do something about how um, we, need, we need to um, be able to control the, uh, the time when our stress uh, turns into chronical. Instead of being taken into the chronical levels, we should bring them down uh, back to uh, our um, homeostasis. So,
Going back to the performance and physiology, how it relates is when under pressure and when feeling um, negative emotions, when feeling stressed emotions, we are not able to function well. Uh, we need to bring awareness to a, a, a different layer of, we need to have a different layer of understanding how we perform in life. We need to have a, a more feminine approach, not very masculine, not only thinking and doing and thinking and doing. Rather than doing, we need to bring an awareness of just being and feeling, feeling into who we are and how we perform, how we um, build this structure towards the performance. When we are, when we are um, if I tell you, if I tell you today, um, go home and come back, uh, twenty-five percent bit better thinking, it will not happen, right? Uh, you will not go home and think about thinking and try to get a better thinking performance and come back tomorrow 25% better. That will not happen. Um, you cannot solve the problem uh, if you look from the same layer, if you look from the same level of consciousness. This is Einstein said, right? Uh, you need to go and see from a bigger perspective. And this is a bigger perspective. You need to see uh, from your physiology point of view to um, make the changes um, in your um, behavior and in your stress, understanding of the stress. I would like to go back again to our heart rate variability and the brain function, how the brain function can be coordinated uh, through uh, one aspect of our um, of our uh, biology. So Tamar, Tamar, please come back. No more mathematics, right? I will ask you to shake. Uh, shall we put up? Well, The head in continuation, the head in continuation of the spine. So I'm not bent or raised up, simply the head continuation of the spine and your eyes closed. And your eyes closed. Without changing Without changing the speed, without changing the pressure, simply bring awareness to your breath. Feel that the air is passing through your nostrils. And as you exhale, feel the warm air passing through your nostrils. Without changing its rhythm, just the way it is, just the way you are, continue breathing with awareness of your breath. Inhalations and exhalations.
when you inhale, there's a point where you don't need to inhale anymore. But at the same time, there is the same point where you don't need to exhale anymore. Just bring awareness of the gap in between the breaths. And also when you exhale, you don't need to exhale anymore. But at the same time, you don't need to inhale anymore uh, yet. Simply bring awareness to the gaps in between the breaths. These gaps are gateways to your deep inner self. And the next time you inhale, bring awareness to the center of the chest in the heart area. Imagine there is an amber of the heart. There is an amber, like a burning coal in the middle of the heart and blow into the amber of the heart. Blow into the fire and make the amber growing bigger. And as you exhale, blow through the amber of the heart and the warm air passing out from the nostrils. Each time you breathe, bring awareness to the center of the heart and grow the fire in the chest area. When you inhale into the heart area, bring awareness to the gaps in between the breaths and simply stay there as long as you can. Without any force, when you feel like breathing again, continue breathing. But stay in the center of the heart when you don't want to breathe. And coming back slowly. Continue breathing like yourself. Without any feel of rhythm. Just be yourself. But if this self wants to breathe in a rhythm, let it happen and enjoy it. And with this awareness, Simply open your eyes.
seems like the same here. No, but I don't have a headache anymore. There you go. Because uh, you, bring, you bring awareness to your intellect, but you, you become a more sensible person. And this sensitivity simply cleared a pathway, cleared a blockage in your energy field. And our energy fields, our auras, are the blueprint of our physical body. When you change something in the energy field, you simply change in the physical world. That's how the shaman works. They don't touch you, but they do something in the vibrations, and then you are healed. Mm -hmm. It is because the etheric body is the blueprint of the physical body. And this is what happened. We simply simplified our lives. That's all. That's all. Anybody feels anxious? Anybody has negative feelings, negative thoughts? It just doesn't exist in this plane, right? So simple. So simple. So all this long story, it goes back to just bring about 15 minutes in your lives. Just 15 minutes. Stay in a corner and bring awareness to your heart. Breathe rhythmically, evenly, through the heart, every day. Seventy is better, maybe. Uh, if it's quite low, your system is cold. Your heart rate will be fifty. And if if you're fiery, your system is very hot. Your heart rate will be one twenty. Okay. So. can also be in a different form. <coughs> we can see your system from a different perspective. Your system can have negative emotions or can have positive emotions. So your system can be in a negative period or positive. This positivity uh, relates to a hormone. Uh, it, uh, the sports people take this hormone. Uh, D H E A, right? You know this hormone? It's uh, illegal. So it makes you happy and powerful to feel uh, very positive. And the negative is uh, when you have cortisol in the system. So you can, at this stage, you are at a point somewhere here. Uh, if we look at your heartbeat, we, we, we can tell you exactly where you are here and you know where, where if you are negative or positive at this stage right now. But all these systems create uh, our feelings. So give me a feeling that when your system is very warm and you are very negative. Angry. Angry. Anger. What else? Anger, rage, 
would the range be warmer or colder compared to anger? Warmer, right? Rage beyond the anger. So let's put it up here. Rage. Furious, 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 hot, and negative, right? But not so negative, maybe. So what was the thing? Furious. Maybe maybe here somewhere. So let's give an example uh, quickly to, uh, we're still negative, but our system is cold. Inside. Ignore. <laughs> Ignorance. Okay. Depression. Yeah. Anxiety. Anxiety. Anxiety is a bit uh, a bit hot system, right? Hot. Uh, anxiety is still negative. Anxiety would somewhere maybe here. Yeah. Okay, let's move to this positive. We are positive and uh, still warm. Exactly. Excited. Joyful. Excitement, joy. Surprise. Excitement, joy, joyful. In love. So yeah. In love. In love. Um, it's mixed all over it. <laughs> joy is in the heart. <laughs> Tama, what do you think about that? <laughs> Is it a one-way love or two-way love? It differs. <laughs> yeah, well, it's love very broad. Well, love, I think, holds everything. <laughs> love doesn't have any conditions. Love is a being as well. Yeah. 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 I can, I can <laughs> the true love, the true, the true love is beyond the feelings. The true, yeah. love, the true love is beyond the feelings and emotions. The true love is a mental state that you surrender to it and will humbly accept whatever it is. And we are just hoping to change it. Hold that together. Okay, our system now is cold and very positive. Contentment. Relax, contentment. Satisfied. Shanti. 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 Satisfied. Shanti. 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 It's a very important state in the Indian, Indian tradition. Shanti. So just bring awareness <coughs> to uh, our <coughs> feelings. Our feelings. Our feelings can be uh, in a scale like this. You can, uh, and you can put all the feelings, how many thousand feelings we have, you can just put it somewhere here. But what we see in the society is that pretty much we are here. So we are on the negative. Yes, the whole society is like that. Like, uh, you can you can see this uh, in front of the coffee machine, <laughs> and then you go with a big heart. <laughs> hey guys, you know you know you're they try to pull you in, and, and, and you, you, this is how the society functions, really. Uh, but what we what we try to uh, what we try to achieve in, in life uh, is to be fair. This is this is the area we want to What HRV breath, what we call what, what we were practicing, HRV breath, what we what we do automatically brings you to the very center. It brings you to this area. 
at least you have the stress, you have the stressor, you have the problem, you have the tiger or your um, teacher or something uh, that stresses you, landlord. Uh, start breathing. At least you will get away from uh, the negativity and you will get away from this area. Uh, if you are hot or cold, you will balance yourself. At least you come to the center. This is a good beginning. So this breath automatically carried you there. And then carrying you out to the more uh, positive area is a different story. And then yoga deals more and more deeper into that area. Uh, there are many layers of practice that you can do with yoga that, ca that can carry you aware fully, and mindfully, mindfulnessly uh, into the area of positivity and integra integrate your entire systems together. Not only physical body, but then the energetical body. And not only the energetical body, uh, than your emotional body and not only your emotional body your mental body and your spiritual body these are the five layers according to yoga these are the five layers of a being and when you align these then you start living uh, what we call synchronicities some of us um, People who do yoga will, will have a lot of awareness of this. Uh, you think it happens, you think it happens. Uh, there is a science behind it. There's a science uh, uh, behind uh, the casinos, uh, the, the Svara Yoga. The, these are ancient teachings. Uh, you just do Svara Yoga and you gamble and you win. This is a technology. It, it, there is no luck. There is a rhythm in the universe and you go into this rhythm consciously or not consciously. But if you bring awareness to your being and start understanding the deeper aspect of your life, the deeper essence of your being, then uh, whatever you think will start happening, whatever you feel, whatever your emotions dictate will start happening because you will be bring awareness to a deeper aspect of life, of yourself. I think I'll finish it. Thank you.